Good evening, everybody. How are you? We are super excited to be here. We are totally full of gratitude to Melissa and Christian who invite us into their beautiful home and to welcome us into your Sangha. This is our first time here playing at the Dome, as you probably already know. And um, we are the Tribe of Love. And this is uh, Susanna Raven, that's me. And this is my sister from another mother, Marin Azov. Um, we live together uh, a little bit southwest of Albany on, on my medicinal herb farm. I'm an herbalist as well, I work with plants. This music is inspired by plants, by Icaros, that come from the Peruvian Amazon, ancient healing songs. And this is my very, very good friend, Jan Palverga from Germany. <laughs> it's always an honor to play with him here because he needs to come all the way over here for that to happen. And here's String Master and Love, Patrick Serdum. <clears throat> to play with us tonight. And uh, so, I would like to invite us to um, take a really deep breath with us. Close your eyes and keep them closed. And then with your eyes closed, you can imagine a blue planet in a far, far away galaxy floating in space. Inhabited by ancient and wise beings, covered in alien rainforests grown from liquid light. But then a storm arises. Flames of darkness run through the forest, engulfing the trees and creatures, until finally, brilliant black darkness has taken over, is ruling the former realm of light. And when the last speck of dust and the last ashes have settled into the black. A teeny tiny seedling glowing green from the inside pushes up through the ashes and unfolds its first set of leaves growing a new forest of light. Serai wo o ante, 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 serai w
This next song is called Viri Viri. It comes from Nigeria. It means every little spark has the power of fire. And there are many different fires we can tend to. We can tend to a nice bonfire, sharing stories and songs, maybe roast some marshmallows. We can tend to a sacred fire, like the fire of a sweat lodge or a teepee ceremony. Letting the smoke take our prayers all the way up to the eagle wings and brings them to straight great spirit. But the most important fire you can tend to is the fire that burns in our hearts. What fire are you burning? What colors are your flames? Is it the fire of creation? Or are there flames of destruction? And if you are Shiva, are you destroying something that is truly beautiful? Or something that has truly outlived its purpose. Every little spark has the power of fire. Every little spark. <coughs> we Ah, 
songs you learn from your parents like the lullaby your mother sang to you when you were little songs you learn from friends that somebody taught you at a bonfire and then there are songs that are taught by plants gifted to the curanderos of Amazonia during plant spirit ceremonies called Icaros. They call in the plant teachers to guide us on our journeys deep inside ourselves and shine a green light into places of darkness. Ay, piri, piri, curandera, curandera de la selva. Ay, piri, piri, medicina, medicina de la tierra.
This next song comes from Israel. And it's sung in a lot of women's circles and there's a movement in Israel where just hundreds of people come together in public places and sing songs together. And this is one of them. My place is holy on this earth. Water, wind, my voice is being heard. I am surrounded by the Holy Spirit. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
vibrational beings. Just imagine like a wild meadow, just covered in wild flowers, poppies, and bees everywhere, collecting nectar and pollen, bringing it back home to their hive, feeding their babies, taking care of their queen, who holds their kingdom together. the hive mind where everything is done for the perfect reason to make the lineage go on. This song was gifted to me by my beehive. It's called Song of Increase, which is the sound of a healthy, vibrant, expanding hive in early summer. Ni 
la bo le la bo la bo hen la na ma he la kham la lo e le he he le han na kum na ne he la e le he he le han la kum na le e le he he le han la kum na ne he la e le We bow to the deep knowledge and wisdom of the First Nation from down under Australia. We bow to the Aborigines. We bow to their way of dreaming this world into existence. We bow to their art of navigating their land with song lines. And we bow to the powers of their most sacred instrument, the didgeridoo.
this is a sacred song for my warrior brothers and my warrior sisters for the warrior in you and me warriors of light who part the darkness with their beacon warriors of love we are here Samnakata, Samanikata, Samanakata, Samanakata, Samasanakata, Samanikata, Samanakata, Samanakae, Samnakata, Samanikata, Samanakata, Samanakata, Samasanakata, Samanikata, Samanakata, Samanakae, Sinanakare, Sinanaki. Sanakata, Sammanikata, to Sammanakate, Sammanakatita,
Sanyakate Madonna ne, 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 Sanyakate Madonna ne. Al 
伸手。
like to invite you to get really, really comfy. And uh, let's take a really deep breath together again. That's always good. Breath is good. And close your eyes.
Mother Earth, Father Sky, and Sister Moon, plants, wisdom, and healing. Mother, Father, and newborn child. Life, death, and rebirth. Holy Trinity, teach us your secrets. Holy Trinity, share your gifts with us. Ting kwang kwang namahina 
special friend Sean the writer. Come and share the story with you. Good evening everyone. <laughs> so I have a short st story to share. Um, it's a story about how the flute came to the people, and um, this story comes from the Lakota Nation. <coughs> so 
So long ago, there was a young boy, young man, decided to go off on a hunting trip by himself. He left his village. First, he, he prepared himself and got his bow and his arrows ready and a little bit of paint on his face. And he was going out hunting for elk. So he left his village, out of his teepee, out of his village, through the forest. And he's looking, 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 looking for tracks, looking for signs of elk, tracks and scat. And eventually he comes across a number of elk tracks and he's counting them and three, four, five, six, seven elk. He starts following them and he can tell the tracks are fairly fresh. So there he is following the tracks through the forest and he kind of picks up his pace. He starts walking a little bit faster and eventually he's jogging along, following the tracks, jogging maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes. and takes a break for a second and checks the tracks again and you could tell he's only maybe about five or ten minutes maybe 15 minutes behind the elk so again starts jogging along jogging along kind of out of the forest up onto this little ridge and gets up onto the ridge and he looks down into the valley below and there they are all seven of them he can see the steam rising from their from their breathing and so he checks the wind and makes sure that he's kind of downwind and he starts creeping in, slowly creeping in, slowly, slowly, slowly kind of stalking in. He finds some tall grass and he's stalking through the grass, close, close, almost close enough to get a shot off. And finally there he is, close enough to get his shot off. So he takes his bow out and he strings it nice and tight, takes an arrow out. And just as he starts to pull his arrow back, the elk, you know, one of the elk heads kind of pops up and looks around and the elk run off, you know, another 50 yards or 80 yards or something like that. So he puts the arrow back and continues on kind of stalking, getting closer and closer. And this goes on for, seems like hours, you know, he's just close enough to get a shot off. And finally they kind of like run off a little bit further. And after a little while he looks up and looks at the sun and the sun is just about to set in the west and he looks back towards his village and he realizes he's miles and miles from his village then he looks back where the elk were and almost magically the elk have sort of disappeared right so he kind of like puts his bow away puts his arrows away and uh, decides he's gonna kind of spend the night out there in this new place so he finds himself a little creek to get a little drink he has a couple little finds a couple plant friends and has a little snack and builds himself a little shelter and lies down in the shelter and he's trying to go to sleep but all of a sudden you know he's hearing he's in a new place in the forest he's hearing all these different sounds you know an owl hoots off in the distance and he hears twigs cracking there in the forest can't quite fall asleep and then all of a sudden there in his shelter he hears a sound he's never heard before in his entire life sits up in his shelter and strings his bow nice and tight gets an arrow out he's kind of a little bit scared but he's very very intrigued as well he's never heard a sound like this ever before so eventually you know the sound kind of comes and goes and the wind is picking up and letting go and eventually the sound kind of lulls him off to sleep and while he's sleeping he has this dream he looks up in the forest above him and there in his dream he sees this red-headed woodpecker in a tree above him and the red-headed woodpecker says to the young hunter says follow me and I'll show you how to make that sound so he follows the red-headed woodpecker out of his shelter and along this ridge and up and up and up and up and the red-headed woodpecker leads him to this old, old cedar tree, mostly dead. And um, he's looking at the cedar tree and just wondering what's going on. And all of a sudden, he wakes up. And he looks around in his shelter and he's thinking to himself, Oh, it's, it's just a dream. You know, and he kind of packs up his bow and his arrows and he 
steps out of his shelter like he's going to walk back to his village. And as he steps out of his shelter, he looks up into the tree. And right above him there in a branch is this beautiful red-headed woodpecker looking down at him. And the woodpecker kind of like gives him this nod and then like flies off to the next tree and turns around and looks at him again. And so he's curious, you know, he starts following this woodpecker from tree to tree and almost just like in his dream, you know, the woodpecker leads him out of the forest and up along this ridge to this old, old cedar tree. And just like in his dream, the cedar tree is mostly dead. But sure enough, there's a little bit of life left in it. And he looks at, carefully at the branches in the tree, and he can see all these woodpecker holes in some of the branches in the tree. You know? And all of a sudden, the wind kind of picks up, and he's standing there, and he hears this. the sound that he was hearing was the sound of the wind as it passed through the branch of the cedar tree and so he gets all excited and he asks the cedar tree he says would it be okay would it be okay cedar tree if I have just that one dead branch up there and he waits and he waits and he waits and sure enough the cedar tree responds mm, yes I think that would be just fine <laughs> So he climbs up into the cedar tree, breaks that branch off, and beelines back for his teepee. You know, he gets back into his teepee, and he's sitting there with the branch, kind of admiring it. And he kind of starts to play around with the branch. it sing like he heard it sing up there on that ridge but no matter what he tries he can't get it to sing so eventually he gets tired you know the sun goes down he goes to sleep in his teepee there and sure enough in his dream the woodpecker comes back to him but this time it's kind of like half woodpecker half man and the woodpecker man says follow me and I'll show you how to make that sound so he follows the woodpecker man out of his teepee, through the forest, up onto the ridge with that big old cedar tree there. And the woodpecker man shows him exactly how to harvest the branch and exactly how to hollow it out. Shows him exactly where to place the holes on the branch. And then the woodpecker man shows him exactly how to blow into that branch to get it to sing. up there in his teepee with the first light he remembers his dream really well and he follows that trail back up to that cedar tree he asks the cedar tree for another branch and he's granted another branch he brings it back to his teepee and just like the woodpecker man shows him in his dream he hollows that branch out places the holes and just like the woodpecker man shows him he blows into that branch to get it to sing
that's the story of how the flute came to the people. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. <laughs> Good to see you here. That's awesome. So we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the water on our planet. I can tend to go a little bit long and get a little bit dark in these moments. We're not going to do that tonight. I know this isn't a show like you normally have here. This is a different kind of evening for the Dome. And we're really grateful that you invited us here. Is this the first show of the, of the year? Beautiful. So um, we'd like to start this year a little prayerfully. Maybe do a blessing for the water that's on this planet and the water that's inside of each of us. We've heard this so much with the pipelines and everything happening in the waterways as they're being destroyed around us, that water is life. We know this. We're 80% plus water. It's in every cell of our being. And it's the reason why we can even live on this beautiful planet. It's the watered one. Some humans being short-sighted don't pay enough attention to it. I have a very strong feeling that that does not apply to anybody in this room. So we'd like to, to, to sing uh, the water invocation this evening. Many of you probably know what this is. This is um, Masuro Emoto, who did all of the studies on the water and how it holds memory. So he brought back this grand water invocation that then Nalini Blossom, beautiful singer, made a little more popular um, to the world. And we've made our own version of it. And for those of you that know it, as we get moving, feel free to sing along. Um, this, this invocation, for those of you who don't know it, has the power in this mantra to actually clear the water Clear the water in your own body first by creating the vibrational sound within your, your being. And then also, because everything is vibration, to purify the water. So it's a great chant to do holding a glass of water before you drink it. When you're bathing in a beautiful, clear, fresh water pool somewhere in the ocean. Anywhere you feel that the water might need a little bit of your help. This is a really great blessing, a really great prayer to chant. Uchu no muge no chikara ga kori kote makoto no taiwa no mio ga narinata uchu no muge no chikara ga kori kote makoto no taiwa no mio ganarinata uchu no muge no chikara ga kori kote makoto no daiwa no mio ganarinata healing blessings on the water we pray for healing blessings on the sea we pray for healing blessings on the river that she may shine in crystal purity we pray for healing blessings on the water we pray for healing blessings on the sea we pray for healing blessings on the river that she may flow in perfect harmony. Uchu no muge no chikara ga kote makoto no daiwa no mio. Ganarinata uchu 
No mugen, no chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio ga narinata uchu. No mugen, no chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio. Ganarinata. We pray for healing blessings on the water. We pray for healing blessings on the sea. We pray for healing blessings on the river that she may shine in crystal purity. We pray for healing blessings on the water. We pray for healing blessings on the sea. We pray for healing blessings on the river that she may flow in perfect harmony. No daiwa, no mio, ganari nata uchu. No muge, no chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio, ganari nata uchu. No muge. No chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio ga narinata. We pray for healing blessings on the water. We pray for healing blessings on the sea. We pray for healing blessings on the river that she may shine in crystal purity. We pray for healing blessings on the water. We pray for healing blessings on the sea. We pray for healing blessings on the river that she may flow in perfect harmony. No muge, no chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio ga narinata uchu. No muge, no chikara ga koriko te makoto. No daiwa, no mio. Ganarinata.
So those of you who have had the distinct pleasure of working with plant medicines know what this next song is about. <laughs> but even if you haven't. The attitude of gratitude and how important it is to be grateful. It's a magical power that I discovered a few years back and it truly is a magical power. If you can keep your heart open and grateful to the life you have, the universe just provides more and more to be grateful for. It's really a very special phenomenon. So uh, about six years ago, I almost died. And I wrote this song in my hospital bed. community and I know you guys call yourself the love tribe right so who better than the tribe of love to come here and play tonight and I just feel so much warmth and medicine and beautiful community here and it is inspiring me and filling me with so much hope for the world that we're living in that all of us are coming together with our hearts open and forming friendships and communities and, and, and chosen family to get through this journey together with so thank you so much, Stephen, for doing our sound. The sound master back there. Thank you so much, Larissa, for filming us. She's been following us around as we record our new album, Dragonflight, and documenting us. Thank you so much for doing that for us. 
And thank you all so much for choosing to come out tonight and spend a night listening to medicine music and connecting your hearts and coming into prayer. I know you normally have like crazy kick-ass parties, which I hope I'm going to be at in the future. But um, this has been a really beautiful evening. So this song was designed to be a sing-along. You could tell I wrote it really simply. The chorus is very easy and very catchy. But I'm a vocal transformation coach, so I teach people how to use their voice, right? So gratitude in the mind is one thing, opening the heart and sending it out. But when you can actually vocalize it, it becomes a physical vibration, which is so much more magnetic than just one little electrical impulse that gets sent out in your brain. So even if you're not a singer, it does not matter. I want you to take your hands and put it on your hearts. And I want you to think about everything you have to be grateful for. What's the first thing that comes into your mind that right now you are just, every time you think of it, it just lights you up like, I can't believe that's mine. I can't believe I had this experience. I can't believe I love this person. I can't believe that beautiful child that I get to hold every night, whatever it might be. Think about what you're most grateful for and feel that feeling in your heart. And we're all gonna sing this together as a community, sending all of our gratitude out so that it can all come back more and more and more and more for us to be grateful for. One, two, three. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. Grateful for every day. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful, grateful for every even when life is hard. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. We get to be here. I'm every day grateful. Feeling these feelings every day. It's a miracle. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. Grateful for every day. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. I'm every day grateful. Grateful for every day. I'm every day grateful. Guys are all really beautiful. I'm sorry, but you're so beautiful. It's like such a beautiful room. What a beautiful song. <laughs> so this is going to be our last song. And um, this is the song where you're going to dance your socks off. So you can also take your socks off now, but you all have to get up now. This is the time to get up and uh, get, to get room because it's going to be moving along. And... Um, <laughs> So this is, this is the Búho de la Noche song. This is the song about the night owl. And besides being a song that really calls you to dance and to move, this is also a moon dance song. And the moon dance is a gathering of hundreds of women that come together for four days and nights without food to dance under a full moon and pray for their loved ones and for the earth and for their communities. So the Búho. The buo, he is coming. Allí viene llegando el buo de la noche. Allí viene llegando el búho de la noche, marca.
Marca cuatro rumbos el búho de la noche Marca cuatro rumbos el búho de la noche Ella, 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 él Ella, 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 a Ella, 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 él Ella, 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 a Ella, 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 él Ella, 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 a Ella, 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 él Ella, 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 a
Clay Horn, you are all awesome and we love you and thank you so much for having us. And that was great. <laughs> and, uh, and what else? Oh, we are recording a new album called Dragonflight. <laughs> and uh, woo! and, um, and uh, we have a GoFundMe campaign uh, that's called Go GoFundMe, support the tribe of love. I think that's what's called, right? So if you if you like to support us, uh, we are we are still in the process of mastering and mixing, and we're going to throw an awesome party in New York City on May 11 and 13. So please come to our CD release show. And, and what else? Oh, and there's CDs up there in the kitchen. And there's also download cards. And there's um, uh, some Agua Fresca products. There, yeah, some products that come from our farm. And um, there's a really beautiful plant perfume that you can use in ceremony. It's like very grounding. And there's a, um, <sighs> Agua Flores, which is an all natural Agua de Florida in ceremony if you ever feel like you need to be lifted up out of the darkness. <laughs> you can put some on you. It's really nice. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we're going to come out and celebrate with you now. So thank you so much. <laughs> and Sean, thank you. And, uh, um, and flute master Sean actually makes his own flutes, just like the man from his story. And there are flutes for sale as well. Where are they, flute? Up in the kitchen? Or they're right here. So if you feel really called to play this beautiful instrument yourself, you can try them out here. I just want to say one more thing, because I didn't call out Sean during the Grateful Song, and I wanted to, but you know, I'm, I'm just moving along, and I never got a chance to actually say thank you. He's actually the reason we're here tonight, and they're, and, yes. and they're gonna have a baby. And I just wanted to say congratulations, and, and best of luck, and just like, you're gonna be the best parents in the world, and I love you. I was supposed to go on the Grateful Song. I'm so grateful for you both. <laughs>